All right, what's up guys? It's Apollo here and today we're gonna have a really fun video We're gonna talk about an idea I have for a video game now if you saw a couple days ago I posted a or I made a post a community post just listing out a, a game idea I had now I'm not the best with words especially writing them down and explaining myself so I thought it'd be a cool video to uh, kind of just talk about uh, the game in more detail. I'm much better at just talking than typing. So I have my post right here. If you guys want to find it, you can find it on my channel in the community tab uh, and kind of go along with me. So what I'm going to be doing here today is just going over all of the points I made in for this game and then kind of explaining it better uh, uh, through this beautiful paint images and you know stuff like that so um sit back relax enjoy again um how serious am i about making this game uh i don't know i don't know if you know i've i've actually have i had experience i have experience uh making a card game which i announced a kickstarter on my channel and that kind of failed miserably but it's really my fault because i didn't promote it enough and I'm gonna change that where you're gonna see every step of the way if I do go with making this game. And that's a big commitment, all right? I wanna make that clear. It's a big commitment. And uh, I'm gonna just show you the, the progress of making this game. So it's just always out there. So when it is time to launch a Kickstarter to, uh, for the game, um, you guys will know what to expect. You'll see it coming, you'll be ready for it, and hopefully there'll be more support for it. So, uh, let's dive in here. That's enough talk. Let's uh, let's talk about my game. So uh, this was an idea I had when playing NTW3 because NTW3 is very you know um, very accurate, very realistic. That's what I was going for, and I thought it'd be really cool to have a chain of command uh, while fighting in these battles. So you would have, as of right now, and again, all these ideas are just brainstorm. Okay, nothing set in stone here. I can change things. I can add things. I just want to make that clear. Uh, as of right now, I'd have about five players on each team. And each player would have a different role. Uh, so, for example, you'd have the major general of the entire army. And their role would be overseeing the overall battlefield, making sure the generals you know, below them are getting the right orders. Uh, and, you know, just really communicating with everyone, planning everything, you know, and just making everything run. That is the general's job. Then you'll have three players who will be a general of a core. Uh, so I'm basing this game mostly off of American Civil War army organization. All right, so uh, I just think it would be cool. We'll get to more of that later about the setting of this game. But three players would control a core. Uh, each core, you know, three cores make up the army. Uh, so their player, it's going to be similar to like Total War, like what their job is to actually fight the battle, send the troops up, you know, move the artillery over here, d split up your divisions. You know, th it's a lot to manage, but that's what the core generals uh, will have to do in this game. And then we'd have the most important role. One player will play as the scout player. Now, battles are always won through intel and information, and scouting is so important. So this player, I, I'm not sure, but just brain, brainstorming here, it would be a player that um, is really good at, or not really good, but it, what I'm having a brain fart here. I'm thinking of a thousand things. It'd be a player who controls basically... Uh, a division of cav or something where they can move uh, cav very quickly and they would have like they wouldn't be a great fighting force but they're really fast and when they send out messages they can get out fast compared to like if a core player sent out uh, a messenger right to to send some information to the the higher up general uh, it will take longer compared to uh, the scout depending where they are on the battlefield of course so the scout would be the person who's looking for important uh, like uh, ter terrain, like uh, land bridges, good 
places for high ground for artillery where they think enemy you know is watching enemy movement uh seeing where different forces are and trying to figuring out like okay this is an entire core located over here blah 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 and just giving that information to the other commanders so they know how to fight the battle um i've thought about other roles too like a supply role where um, sorry about this. There's doggies in here. They're making a lot of noise. Uh, someone would manage the supplies uh, of the battle. So if someone, uh, let me just start drawing on here really quick to explain. Uh, let me just, you know, since we went over the roles, let me just show you what the way this game would work out. So um, they would um, basically at the start of the battle would be in a in a lobby like this, looking at a map of the actual battlefield and when the, these battlefields are going to be huge guys i mean they're going to be massive plenty of space to scout plenty of space to maneuver um find good land bridges that might be out of the way but it's safer stuff like that so all the commanders will be right here looking at this map just pretend i know this is napoleon total war ntw3 uh just pretend this is a map no markings no words no deployment here uh, so what's going to happen is the the game's going to look like this. So there's going to be one team and here is just for example, this is the command center of one team and this is the command center of the other team. So um, while I guess you could you could have like a little bit of a fog of war. So if we put like a fog of war kind of in the center where you can see like the land a little bit near the command tent right you can see that pretty clearly same thing for the other team but over here you would only really see like roads and it would be grayed out right roads and major landmarks like mountains hills but you wouldn't see the detail of like bridges and and land bridges and fords and stuff like that so while you're in this stage you'll be working with the other generals the generals of the corps and the scout um, uh, just kind of talking about um, the the attack plan and I thought it would be really cool if everybody had like a marker or something and they could like draw out or even type out give names to landmarks so let's say if there's like a big hill over here you could give it the name like call it little top or something write it and mark it on the map that way when you tell hey commander of core one you need to make your way to little top and hold that hill uh, he'll know exactly what you're talking about because he'll see this map. So I thought it'd be really cool where the commanders could like sit down and draw out their attack strategy. And uh, the way it would work in my head, in the, or I guess the, the design of the game, is that the cores would slowly get onto the battlefield, right? There wasn't, there's not going to just be an army here ready to go. Um, so you're going to be able to pick where you want the cores to enter right the core to enter in, onto the battlefield uh now i guess again this is all brainstorming so i'm this some of these ideas might be terrible but the way i would do it is that if a core is coming closer to the command tent it can move in faster uh, but if it's kind of going further away more on a flank it would take longer almost as if they they're shifting this way off map to get over here right uh, and another thing is that the core would slowly appear it's not like oh cores here the entire core is right here you're gonna have a couple regiments come up and you're gonna have to slowly deploy and slowly fight as you wait for more regiments more cab more artillery from the core to show up and help with the battle so that would be the process of of this fight and so what these core generals are going to do is basically very similar to like total war they're going to be commanding their their infantry they're going to be fighting the enemy and if you are playing the general let's say your general's right here you're going to stay obviously at the at the command center um, you can i'm thinking you can move around but we'll get to that later uh, let's say you, there's fighting as a general all you will see is maybe flashing going on here and cannon shots and gunshots so as a general you know that there's fighting over here but you have no idea to what extent is going on so it's up to the core commander to one either uh, well one you can be a general and move closer to the engagement and kind of talk in like proximity or the commander is going to have to send a messenger and he's going to have to ride real time to you and the way I was thinking of doing this is either by typing a message which might take a while so I thought it'd be cool if you could like press a button and record a quick message like hey under attack by two cores I need help and then that messenger sends 
you know, once they're in range of the general, then the general player can hear that message and it'll just repeat what he said in the recording, obviously. <laughs> Uh, so I thought it'd be cool because information will be delayed. Uh, so it's just mistakes. Like how many times have you learned about a battle in history? And the reason some one side loses the battle is because of lack of intel or delay of intel and stuff like that. Um, so that would be the premise of the game, guys. Is that um, it's a system of chain of command. Uh, organizing the attack, scouting the battlefield and uh, executing well now I know there's many challenges with this game there's a lot I mean it's pretty ambitious but the biggest thing is what stops anybody from using discord then well you know like it's, stop using discord instead of using the in-game chat well I mean nothing there's nothing you can really do so it, that's going to be one problem unless we come up with a system of I mean, I don't know. I, I guess it's got to be an honor system or something. Or, I, you know, it's not like we can put in a program here that's like, hey, you have Discord running. You're not allowed to play. Obviously, that wouldn't be good. Um, so you would have to think of something. Um, but hopefully we have people who just want to play and get immersed and, ex you know, experience this type of warfare. And they have an honor system and they don't break the rules. Again, that's one problem with the game. So, let's move on to this list. I gave you the general overview of the game. Uh, uh, let me just, real quick, enjoy that stutter. Uh, let me, <laughs> I got so many thoughts going on. I'm just stuttering left and right. Uh, so, another thing I thought would be cool is having a day-night cycle uh, where battles would go on multiple days. Uh, depending on the scale of the battle, um, where um, if it is a huge battle, it could go on for like three days. And each day could be about, what, 20 to 30 minutes, maybe less, maybe like 20 minutes. And then nighttime will be five minutes. And nighttime is just where there's a cease in fighting. And um, the generals have reconvened in this area, back into the command tent, right? Where they can kind of go over like, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm taking on two cores. If core one can move a couple divisions to support me um, and join the fight over here or move a division over here, stuff like that. Um, I think that would be cool. It might be kind of challenging, but just an idea. So let's move on to my checklist. I've got different uh, paragraphs here of different ideas. So big battles. We want big battles, guys. So the battles could be historical or made up. Again, definitely going to definitely going to be heavily based on the Civil War. But I don't necessarily want this to be the Civil War because I want people almost like Avatar Conquest and, and Shogun 2. I want people to be able to make their own armies. I think it'd be really cool to pick your own, you know, flag, design your own flags and like the uniform colors and uh, even have like regiments that perform well in battle and you can give them a special name and they're they're more professional um, but of course the way that would balance is that that regiment would cost more money to use in the battle so, uh, so th something like that so i thought that, that would be really cool so anyways big battles huge maps i'm talking huge all right i would try to make it against uh, use the civil war as a reference kind of look at the general sizes of those uh, battle, you know, famous Antietam, Gettysburg, stuff like that, um, and just kind of use that to kind of gauge where these battlefields are going to be in terms of size. Um, generally speaking, I think there's going to be one side that's defending, one side is attacking. I guess you could say the attackers would have more money or their cores are more in position, so the defenders are going to have to kind of scramble a bit more. Again, that's just an idea. Um, so, and again, scouting is going to be extremely important. The scout player is going to have the most important job of just riding around, maybe trying to get behind enemy lines, uh, trying to go unseen, you know, um, and just trying to spot different, uh, enemy locations or artillery placements and, and stuff like that, just to help out the other commanders. Uh, so that's, that's the kind of scale I want. I mean, it, it's like massive, <laughs> massive battle where you have to like probably scroll a little bit. Like you can't just zoom out. You gotta, scroll. I don't know. I don't, again, mechanics, that's for another time. Um, another thing is battle style. Um, I wouldn't make this game heavily graphically intensive. I would probably make it um, a bit more basically where you can have like 
two armies of 80,000 troops or something. You know what I mean? So basically have it so you have huge armies and it's still... It looks good enough to be immersive. I, I'm a huge fan of sound design. I think that's always important. You know, having like just beautiful gunfire effects and artillery effects. Uh, something similar to um, Ultimate General Civil War, that game. But not exactly, obviously. I wouldn't want to make it exactly like that. That art style and stuff. But um, that kind of graphics. Because the focus of the game is more the chain of command. Right, the chain of command and everybody playing their part to win the battle. Uh, I'm thinking these battles will last like the big ones about an hour long. So this is definitely not a game for casuals. <laughs> this is going to be a game for hardcore gamers. Uh, base, I, I just wanted to make a game that I wanted to play. That that's basically what I'm doing. Okay, and I'm hoping you guys want to play it too. That's that's what I uh, that's what I'm hoping. So one hour, beautiful handwriting. Uh, we could have smaller scale skirmishes, so like we can have different uh, battle sizes. So we could have instead of three cores, it could just be two cores, and it's 30 minutes long, right? And there's less players you need, or even smaller. You could do one core and a scouting force and one general, and that's you know. The, so there's a lot of different options there. But like, come on, guys, we all want to play in the big battle. <laughs> we don't want to do no. 20 minute 30 minute battle no i'm sure some of you guys want to do that but and i'm also thinking it would be cool um very similar to war of rights you know how they have a website where you can form your company i think it would be cool to like form your army and you can kind of have a post on that on the website and it shows the different commanders you have the general and the player name uh, you know, the major general of core one major general of core two uh, the general of you know just Stuff like that where you could have, you could kind of showcase and it'll help you organize events against other teams and uh, you'd have it so, you know, you could, hey, so-and-so, do you want to play? And you could even have a bit of a competitive scene with this or, you know, have a bit of a tournament where you face each other or whatever. I don't know. There's It's endless possibilities. So, um, yeah, that's going to be the battle style. Um, and... Uh, so, and of course, the, the battles are going to have the classic mechanics of battles. Uh, terrain advantage, having the high ground, trees slowing down troop movement, roads increasing troop movement, uh, but trees also giving you cover, uh, harder to spot. Um, you're going to have supply lines. Again, I think supply lines are very important. Stuff like that. And of course, running your troops out of formation will make them more tired, less combat effective. Uh, so things to consider in the game, again, realistic mechanics. Uh, so scouting and planning, again, that is, um, I kind of went over that, where the players can scout and plan. I actually have another uh, another map that might be a little bit better. So if we go to, what a battlefield? Uh, don't save. So if we go here, uh, this is like a real, I know this is like huge, but like don't worry about the scale. Just scale's not important. Uh, for right now to explain this. So again, let's say you have the commander tent here, commander tent over here. Again, you plan and uh, you so for this is a real terrain here. So if this was a real battlefield, it would be a nightmare because I'm pretty sure this is a forest. But let's just pretend this is fields. You got roads here. So you could be like, all right, uh, general of core one, I want you to be uh, the main force. I want you to go here. And we're going to hit some roads over here. So when you get to these roads, we need to strike hard right in the center and move fast. And let's just say for the defenders, red team, the objective is this, right? That's the objective. You got to get that. I don't know if that's going to be an actual mechanic, but it's something like that. So core one, core, I'll just here for convenience here. Let me just put C1 for convenience. Core one, you're going to move here. I want core two. To move in from this angle and you are going to support core one so core two here you're going to group up at the at the road and group and push together but core one i want you to have two divisions right two divisions and i'll have a nice way of organizing the forces for the generals when they're playing i want two divisions to hold this flank in case in case the enemy try to flank around our advance through the center now i want core three 
Now, you're going to be very far away, so it's going to take your army to, to get over here for a long time. But you're basically the reserves, and gonna, you're going to defend the flanks. So you're going to head to this road, and you're going to hold here. You're going to hold here in case the enemy uh, tries to swing around and hit the center. So it's your job to hold. At the same time, if center needs more artillery support or infantry support, you're going to start peeling divisions to go over to this side to help the center. So doesn't that sound pretty cool? I mean, it sounds pretty cool. Very ambitious. And then let's say the enemy team, you know, they're like, okay, this is a nice defensive area here. I want core one mostly to hold here. Also core two, if you could send some artillery pieces to help core one to hold this ground. Uh, core three, you're going to go here and try to uh, just hold this flank for now and wait to orders. And then core two, I want you to also come here and, uh, you know, while the battle's playing out, they're scouting, they could be like, hey, um, I scouted a ton of enemies pushing in the center. Okay, well, Core 2, I want you to go to the flank and try to get around there. But they didn't see the two divisions waiting here. But two divisions isn't strong enough to hold a core, but, you know, they, are, they could hold long enough until core one can you know peel some troops back from the the center to support this or even core three could move some troops over it take a long time but that that's the fun of it it's just like and then while this is going on you've got the general over here that is getting you know messages from all the cores like you know every once in a while you could send a messenger and be like you know it's all clear here i don't see anything or i see a couple of regiments but there could be more in the general it's up to the general to organize these cores and make sure <coughs> excuse me make sure that they are going into the right place and attacking the right time and and stuff like that now i was also thinking a mechanic where the general is allowed to to go to different parts of the battlefield so if he goes over here it's going to take the messenger much longer to get to the general because he has to find the general because now he's no longer in his command tent. So what's going to happen is the messenger is going to go to the command tent first. He's going to figure out where the general is and then go to the general. So it's much better for the general to stay in his command tent and, um, <clears throat> and um, get orders that way. So, and <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Throat's clogging up. Um, so what the general into, and I, I, I know it sounds kind of boring for the general, uh, to just be sitting here while the battle is going on. But remember, he will see flashes of artillery. He won't know exact things. He'll hear sounds, you know, just like you would on a real battlefield or maybe even see some of the engagement because you can, you know, maybe that's a high ground or something. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but what's cool about the general is I'm thinking that he will have a map. The other generals won't have this. The, the main general of the army will have a map. And as he gets information, he'll be able to draw on that map. So, for example, let's let me just clean this up a little bit. Just a little bit. Just so I can... Just a tad bit. So, let's say that... Um, let's say that uh, the scouts or scouts will make them green. Spot an empty location here. But... There are regiments here and here. So there's a gap in the lines which they could, you know, take advantage of. He could go on, the commander can go on the map and he'll have a map like we saw in the Napoleon map of the actual battlefield. And he'll have like little pencil tools where he can draw out what the intel is giving him. Now, how, how accurate is that intel? Who knows? How delayed is that intel? Who knows? By the time he gets the information here from the scout that there's a gap in the line. And then he tells uh, Second Corps to start moving troops here. The enemy could have uh, reformed their lines or something, you know. Uh, so that that is the um, the idea behind it all. Lots of fog of war, lots of scouting, lots of getting information, and uh, this is gonna be like a real life battle. Now, if you ever, do you guys ever hear of that Vietnam game where you're a radio commander and you're basically, it's really cool. You're like looking at a screen like this and you're getting information about enemies and locations and like artillery placement and stuff like that. Uh, and you got to try to organize and move troops around, give out commands and stuff. 
so that's in a way similar. Now, I also thought if that was still too boring for the general, he could also manage supply lines. So, for example, if the center encounters heavy fighting, they're going to go through ammo and artillery rounds very quickly, and they could run out. And if they run out, well, they're going to have to retreat. So it's up to the general to try to supply these lines accurately you know to the best of his ability and make sure the troops are well equipped for whatever they're they're taking on so that is basically the scouting and planning in a nutshell um relaying information again i went over that um we could use proximity chat so if there's two core generals right next to each other they can talk to each other real time um but if they're far away they have to send a messenger and uh the like I said, the scouts can send me messengers much faster. I even think it's cool if like enemy cav, right? Or your scouting cav is behind enemy lines. If you send a messenger from there, there's a good chance that he's going to die because he's or get captured by enemy uh, troops. So it's important to run the cav to a safe place, then send the messenger, right? And the further you are in the back lines... That intel you're going to get, it's going to be pretty old. It's going to be pretty old. Uh, so that is the reasoning behind that. So that is the idea there. Uh, so, um, and of course, uh, the core commanders will also be able to uh, relay information. But their messengers might be a little slower than the scouts. Uh, this is all just gameplay reasoning. Of course, it matters on the distance, right? So let me just, there we go. It all matters on the distance. So, uh, you know, they can send messengers to the general. Core commanders can send messages to other core commanders. Uh, stuff like that. So, um, you know, you can have whole, maybe multiple messengers, maybe two messengers, stuff like that. And again, I thought about other roles, but I, I some people I, in the post I made about this, some people said like, oh, you could have like regimental leaders and division leaders. That would be really cool, but... It's just too many players. I'm trying to keep as little players as possible because another person brought up, you know, the issue of someone crashing, right? If someone crashes, what's going to happen? It's good. And that is going to be a problem. So the less players you have, the less chances of that happening. And I'm thinking that if, let's say, Core 1 Commander crashes, then Core 2 Commander will have control of both. So it doesn't stop the battle. And then hopefully have a system where core one commander can join back into the game and take control of his core once he's back. Or if the general disconnects, the core commander could be general, right? So core commander one will become general and core commander two will control both core and one and two. So just an idea there. Uh, so scouting and planning, uh, relaying information, which we explained uh, multi-day battles, which I kind of briefly talked about, but I can go into more detail. Uh, so just having it so you have intense fighting going on. And then, um, or you could even set the battle up in phases, right? Like maybe the objectives here, and then you've got like the last phase. Let me, let me change the color. So let's just use yellow here. You got the last phase, middle phase, and the beginning phase. Right, so day one could be the skirmishing here. And if the attackers, let's say blue are the attackers, they push back the enemy. And if the enemy agrees to just fall back, they ran out of supplies, they're losing the fight, they need to retreat to better ground, then night would come, right? And then the troops, the you know, the not the troops, the commanders would try to organize the next phase. And then you have the third phase. Possibly, I don't know. There's a lot of things you can do there. A lot of things you can do there. Um, so multi-day battles would be cool. If if not, I mean, if that's just too much, then obviously I'm okay with just having a one-day battle. Um, and the game setting. And this is something I wanted to say for the end of this video because we are about 30 minutes in here. I want I wanted to do this on the American Civil War, but I didn't want to limit it. Limit it to just Civil War battles. I wanted this to be kind of a sandbox in a way where, like I said, people could create their own flags. They could design their own uniforms. I was thinking for like your commander profile, like in the loading screen, I'll show your commander picture. You can even organize the uniforms and like the trim and the color and everything. 
I think that would be really cool. And people will be part of uh, kind of like clans or teams. And we'll have team battles and bitter, bitter rivals and, and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, uh, again, to make the game, the, to make people want to play it, it's always a good idea to have unlockable items like new cosmetic items or stuff like that i probably wouldn't i wouldn't put any kind of loot stuff in there like none of this will be you know you can't buy any of this stuff it's all going to be you unlock it through experience you know and maybe you can unlock uh new sigils for a flag or whatever you know you can design your own flag Maybe you just keep it really simple, like, all right, we're going to make it look like America, but let's put a little bit of Japan there. That's our flag. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And then we can make this gray because, you know, how many flags have gray? What? Not a lot. And then, you, like, hey, let's put a little stripe through here. I don't know how much freedom I would give, but put a little stripe through here and we'll make this purple. I mean, it would probably be some disgusting flags out there, but... You would have that option of customization, but the armies themselves in terms of organization would be based upon the civil war, you know, having the general, the three corps, regiments, you know, stuff like that. So that w that's how I'd base it off of. Even the fighting style would be based off the civil war. But again, the limitation of the civil war, it's mostly Eastern America, right? So this, you can make this crazy. You can do all kinds of crazy battlefields in the West, the canyons, the Grand Canyon, and have like very interesting battlefields of, let's say you have a giant canyon in the middle you can't walk through and you have to divide your cores like this. Like that would be pretty cool. Uh, or having like snow maps and all that cool stuff. And I would even think, like I would try to have a modding tools where people could mod and make their own maps which would be really awesome uh so yeah that's the the general idea of uh of the game i'm just gonna scroll through here and see some of these uh people's like what they recommend or their concerns or anything um a lot of uh, it sounds like a lot of people are excited so here's someone black paw 77 he said, I love the idea of cores if the, or core or cores, right? If there's multiple core. Anyways, the scouts can choose to scout a day or even a night, which would be risky to relay bad info. Keep the roles, just uh, uh, keep the roles, but just add more. So it's a little more intense and immersive. Again, I, I kind of mentioned uh, you know, adding more roles. The day night cycle could be 15, 10 minute day. Uh, the night have the impression that you are in a time crunch at night to plan war realism. Also, a night scout party. Could also do some night scouting or even do some raiding. Those are all pretty good ideas. I like that. Um, honestly, I've been waiting for a game like this to come out. That's very exciting stuff. I mean, I've gotten very like motivating comments here that it, I guess what I should address here is that... Um, oh, also someone... Uh, Kaiser Van Enrich uh, wants a game set in kind of like the clo colonial time because you have more countries to work with. But another person mentioned that, well, the battles weren't as big. Um, so that's why I like the idea of letting people build their own empire. And also having like a campaign map. Again, very similar to Avatar Conquest in um, Total War Shogun 2. Having like territories, right? Territories. Or maybe even having multiple armies. That would be cool. So let's just pretend these are all territories, these ugly circles here. And having two armies where you have a general lead army one and general lead army two. And then you have your sub commanders in each one. And let's say you want this this territory. And so you will be on the attack. It's controlled by the enemy. Uh, so the enemy will be on the defense. And if you win, you take this territory. And maybe you get more supplies out of it or whatever. Or the troops over here lose morale. You know, stuff like that. Um that I mean, that's a that's a possibility, right? That is a possibility. Let me just go ahead and remove this terrible campaign map. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to waste too much time kind of reading this. I probably should have done this before, but uh, there's a lot of possibilities, and I would I would make it so um, the way multiplayer would work is that when like when you're searching for a game, 
you'd have your teams, you'd have you'd have all your friends, all your commanders get on. You would all join a queue and then it would search for another team of people joining the queue. Now, I think in a game like this, very hardcore, it's not going to be very populated. <laughs> Just going to be honest. Uh, now, I think a lot of people will play it, but it's probably going to be better to organize events and play these battles similar to like War of Rights. Uh, so who knows? Who knows how popular this game's going to be? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, in terms of, am I actually going to do this? I would love to, I would love to, right? But the biggest problem is always money as making a game like this is going to cost a lot of money. And even if I started a Kickstarter guys, I would have to start building it now and using my own money, my own savings it for you know to pay an animator to pay a programmer because i don't know how to do any of that stuff i'd just be like the game director <laughs> directing the kind of the the you know the way i want to the envision of the game basically and kind of just directing everybody um in terms i would be the commander in the tent and the animator would be core one and the programmer core two and the command you know stuff like that um so what i would have to put in my own money right to get this started enough to where I can show some sort of gameplay for the Kickstarter. Cause I can't just like show up to the Kickstarter and do this, <laughs> you know, like make this video, the Kickstarter video, Hey, fund my game. Cause that's a nightmare and people don't want to throw money at something that uh, won't come true. They want some sort of security, right? And that the game's already being developed and there's already progress. Uh, so I would have to put my own money into this game to get it started and then rely on the Kickstarter to fund the rest of it. Um, and again, I don't, I don't envision this game like being like this, like some huge success or anything like this is, you know, it's not going to be like Fortnite or something. <laughs> Obviously, I don't think anybody wants it to be like that. Um, so in my head, I'm just like, I want to play a game that I want to play something, you know, I just want to play the game. That's it. Like the reason I'm making it is to play the game and to make this come true. Uh, so I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. Obviously, there would be some consequences in going down this route. Uh, I'd still be able to do YouTube, maybe not as consistently. Um, also, I'm pretty sure Total War would not be allowed to work with me. So as in they cannot give me any kind of early access. So I would basically be blacklisted for total war because if you do any kind of video game related stuff um they consider you a competitor and they will not work with competitors i'm not going to give out names here but i remember back in the day um a, a youtuber who worked with total war got a job with another company and total war stopped giving them and it was like something that doesn't even relate doesn't even relate to strategy games or battle games and they stopped giving him early access until he eventually left the company. So uh, that's one thing to consider. I, I, you know, I wouldn't get that early access stuff, which I'm fine with personally. I'm fine if I'm. This is like a dream come true if I'm actually able to pull this off. Uh, but that's that's basically it, guys. Um, I don't want to go on for too long here. I'm pretty excited to release this and see what you guys have to say. Um, I'm sure the comments, there's going to be a lot of great people, you know, mentioning ideas or concerns and stuff like that. But if I am going down this route of making this game, I am going to be completely transparent. I'm going to show you as much progress as possible. I know I'm not going to show everything because I don't want to be, you know, the biggest problem with games is giving out false promises or trying to achieve something that might not be possible, AKA No Man's Sky, uh, where he promised the world and everybody got hyped. And when it released, it was nothing like what he said it was gonna be. So I would just make this development process very public and really work with the community, probably start a website, had a forum, you know, where people can get on and talk about ideas and concerns and you know, stuff like that. So yeah. So I think that's going to be it guys. That is my idea. I would call it like chain chain of command or something. I don't know. I haven't really thought of an, a game name, but
but something of that nature. Um, I think it'd be really fun. Um, it'd be really cool. But uh, I guess a good way to figure out how hyped you guys would be is um, just see in the comments. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I can always make more of these types of videos. I know it was a little scatterbrained, but I like I had a lot of ideas fresh in my mind and I just wanted to make a video. I was going to wait until tomorrow to have a bit more organized presentation, but I wanted to just get everything out and have this video to look back on. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time on the battlefield.